We somehow knew that distance education is the way to way for developing us. I mean, that is not made the only way, but obviously that is one of the very important components of taking education to people who are somehow limited in their capacity in various forms. Now, once we have determined that we didn't know how to do, how to go about it. We knew that it is important, but we have no knowledge of how to, or even how well matured it is, how developed it is, all kinds of questions we had. We were studying on and on, going to libraries, reading books, this, that, but still, you know, to develop that confidence, we didn't have. So we, NRM, Canada Foundation for Nepal, and uh, Nepalese Association of Edmonton, uh, we made a team, and then we went with a fact-finding mission to Athabasca University, and we consider that as a sanctuary of our temple of uh, open and distance education, you know, and then in search of this distance learning God, you know. <laughs> so what happened was that in this uh, quest, when we really went there, what we found out was that we were really, when we came out, we were, we felt that we were really empowered. Our legs had some strength built onto them, you know. So when we came and when we started walking, the steps that we walked after that and coming up to here is quite, I think, quite uh, noticeable in a sense. Because if there was a big CEO getting 10 million, 10 million dollars and then in six months that CEO achieved this and that, and the way, the amount of achievement we have done, he would say that, oh, now I have to have a bonus of 25 million dollars or something like that. But of course, we work with zero dollars, and with zero dollars we have come this far, it's quite remarkable in a sense. So you keep on doing that. So, <laughs> so what's happening is that this was originally, this project was, this was originated in Canada Foundation for Nepal. But we realized that this was very complex in that. And any one organization to achieve a task this complex would be almost impossible. Then we started finding what is the what, how do we develop the partnership? And in this sense, as we discussed, we found that NRN is the right forum for this because NRN has organization in more than 55 countries throughout the world. There is huge following. It's a growing organization. It has credibility in Nepal. And so that is how we will work with NRM in the global frontier as our first, first um, frontier to explore. And then, then we will go through government of Nepal and then all kinds of international institutions. And then so we have followed those paths. Today, government of Nepal has positively viewed our uh, proposals. Although we haven't gotten any formal signing of MOU or something like that, at least our MOU is on the table of government of Nepal. And the government of Nepal has sent us uh, some days ago that it is sending a representative of University Grant Commission's uh, secretary, uh, uh, member secretary, to this conference, but I haven't seen, but something might have happened in that last moment because in Nepal is going to interesting kind of transition and then all things are um, like kind of shaky in uh, Nepal at this very moment. So that's why something might have come along, but somehow up to, um, even few days ago, we had heard that he was coming. And even that letter that he is coming shows that we have reached somewhere in our journey. And so what I want to say is that this distance education, I do not have to say why it is necessary because it is so eloquently said by Dr. Khatron and Dr. Panikul and then everybody here who is here essentially needs no uh, no time to say 
say that it is necessary. It is about how it is possible to do it and how it is possible to make it a vehicle for quality education. In fact, the quality is the problem. Just having a university, distance education university is not also the key point. It is about how to build a university that is that can deliver profound quality education and that can transform people's lives. And we know that in order to do transformative work, you need people who have transformative minds. And then we have that level of intellect, that level of education. But the problem with Nepal is that most of the people who become, who are talented, who are educated, they migrate either the cities and then if possible to foreign countries. That's why no matter how many people Nepal's villages produce, how many highly educated people Nepal's villages produce, most of those are talented people end up in foreign countries. We are ourselves examples. I was the only PhD, now there is another PhD now and then others are doing now. But somehow my village had produced one PhD but it didn't help my village, right? Because I never went, I never served that village. So it is the same thing with everyone's village. So that is the reality of Nepal. Now, that I am not going to, I am not prepared to go to Nepal and live in the village. Or there may be some exception, but in large part, most of us now are not going to go back to the villages. How can our knowledge go from here to the villages so that the villagers can, in turn, benefit from the fact that they have contributed to our education. That is the whole notion of uh, involving this diaspora community in distance education programs. Okay, finally it is here. Look at that. <laughs> I can find it. This is great enough already.
convert that knowledge into a transferable and then and then a knowledge that is recognized by the world as a true knowledge or whatever. You know, that's how it has been.